Sitchin Shin Shu Chi, Dear Minister, Chers Amis, à la table d'honneur, Shanuni Pani Ponoda. Mish Vachi Druim, Vachi Tratim, Rokum Nezalashna Shu Krajine, Duja Bahatus Minilusha. Ukrajinske Naselinia, Znova Stalo Silnoju Ukrajinsku Junatsu. І ми часто говоримо, що Євромайдан поборов скорумпований, захланний, авторитарний режим Віктора Януковича, і це є правда. Але що ми забуваємо, що Євромайдан також поборов політику президента Росії Владимира Путіна. Бо Владимир Путин всюди публично заявляв, що до 2015 року буде євроазійський простір, який буде складатись з колишніх республік Радянського Союзу. Це і цей самий Владимир Путин, що говорив, що розпад Совєтського Союзу чи Радянського Союзу була найбільшою трагедією ХХ століття. І він її старався відбудувати. І не тільки старався відбудувати, він предсказував зухвало, що це буде зроблено до 2015 року. І Євромайдан перекреслив ці плани. І Євромайдан показав і розвіяв міф непоборності Росії. І я вірю, що як український народ буде далі іти з Богом, так як Євромайдан йшов з Богом, бо під кулями Люди молилися в каплиці на Євромайдані, священники наші ходили і відправляли на Євромайдані до тої міри, що навіть погрожували ліквідацію Української Греко-католицької церкви, як вона буде продовжувати на Майдані відправляти служби. А головно, що патріарх Святослав поблагословив український народ під прокров Пресвятої Богородиці і кінець кінців на Євромайдані добро побороло зло. І я вірю, що як український народ буде більше скупим у критиці, а більш жертвенним в діях, і фінансово, і будемо далі з Богом йти вперед, то ми ще вичищимо Україну, Східню Україну, позбавимося ворогів на Східній Україні, а потім відзискаємо Крим. Я хочу подякувати сьогодні, This is a day that we should be thanking those who stood by us. Because they say that a friend in need is a friend indeed. And Canada has been a true friend. <laughs> you know, I've traveled the world and I, sp I spoke with a lot of politicians about Ukraine. And you know when you talk about a politician and he's thinking, when's my next meeting? <laughs> that didn't happen to you when I was speaking to you. <laughs> But I was at a meeting with the Prime Minister of Canada, which was not a formal meeting, but rather a meeting with, where the Prime Minister came down with a pad and a pen and sat down with us and said, what can we do now? 
And as each one of us was giving our opinion, the Prime Minister was sitting and taking notes. And he said, I'm going to be looking at this very seriously. Of course, we had our culprits in the room, Minister Kenny, Ted Opitz. But the Prime Minister actually delivered. I'm not going to say, Minister Kenny, that few politicians do, but the Prime Minister actually really delivered. Minister Beard visited the Euromaidan. There were parliamentary hearings dealing with Ukraine. And every time I went to Ukraine, the, from the President to all of the MPs with whom I talked said, it's amazing how educated Canadian MPs are about the situation in Ukraine. There were meetings of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Prime Minister Harper was the leader of the G7 that said that the, it should no longer be a G8, but a G7, and that we should not be going to Sochi for the next summit. Canada issued real sanctions, sanctions against individuals, and that didn't, if, when that did not do what it should have, there were sector-specific sanctions against Russia. The Prime Minister of Canada was the only G7 leader that was at the inauguration of President Poroshenko. Canada sent, prior to the inauguration, a substantial monitoring mission. And I don't know, Minister Kenny, I, if you recall, you said that you traveled with me to Ukraine when uh, you were actually the only minister from a G7 country that was in Ukraine to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Holodomor. And Minister, I don't know if you recall, but when we both landed, you were told that we would be passing before going to the hotel by the Bikibnya Cemetery, and you uh, lost your luggage, and you turned to me and said, do you have a black tie that I could put on? I pulled mine, I gave it to you, and you looked at Paul and said, this is going to cost me a lot. <laughs> But I don't think that even you could have imagined how much it would cost you. <laughs> but Minister, you've delivered every time. And when people ask me, Minister Kenny, what is he? Is he multiculturalism? Is he uh, still citizenship or immigration? I say, Minister Kenny is the Minister for Ukrainian Affairs. <laughs> I'd like to say that I had the privilege of meeting the President of Poland, Mr. Komorowski, who was looking during the difficult days during the Maidan at solutions. He was seriously trying to find a solution when the EU made the release of Yulia Tomoshenko a condition, and he knew that President Yanukovych would never do that. He was suggesting to decriminalize the provisions of the criminal code in order to make it not a release of a political prisoner, but rather a change in the legislation. Pavel Koval, the chair of the EU-Ukraine parliamentary group, was consistently defending the Ukrainian cause in the European Parliament. The Foreign Affairs Minister of Poland, Mr. Sikorski, attended the most strategic meetings in order to try to prevent 
bloodshed in Ukraine. E EU uh, members of parliament, Sabius Volsky, Jacek Protasevich, the vice chair of the EU parliament, Mr. Sivik, and many others have been on our side when it counted. And even when Russian agents tried to rekindle old wounds between Ukrainians and Poles, the Prime Minister Donald Tusk said, that's not the right way. We should remember the past, we should forgive each other, and we should strengthen our relationship. That is the kind of friend that Ukraine counted on during its difficult days. <laughs> to our honorary council from Lithuania, I first wish to give condolences, to pass our condolences for the br brutal killing of the honorary council of Lithuania in Luhansk. And I also want to thank Lithuania for what it had done for Ukraine. During the strategic third partnership summit, Lithuania was the chair, was the, had the presidency of the EU. And when many European leaders were disenchanted with the way President Yanukovych behaved, where he announced to the press that he would not be signing the EU-Ukraine Association Agreement before even telling those with whom he was negotiating, there were a lot of unhappy people. But Lithuania was unhappy too. But it was, did not remain unhappy. Lithuania understood that above an authoritarian regime, there is the Ukrainian people that really wanted to Euro-integrate. And at that summit, the European, the, the Lithuanian government allowed me to speak at the European Parliament on behalf of the Ukrainian community worldwide and to say publicly to the world that in November 2013, it is, as we say in French, and we will eventually sign, which was done in June of this year. The Lithuanian organizers at that summit had also the vision to invite for a round table discussion the following individuals. Mr. Poroshenko, Mr. Yatsunyuk, Mr. Tchernebok, Alexander Kosnevsky, and I had the privilege of being at that table. Today, President Poroshenko is the president, Mr. Yatsunyuk is prime minister, and Lithuania is a great friend of ours. <laughs> Latvia was also and remains a great friend. When I met the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Latvia, he told me we will be there to support when Ukraine finally gets around to signing that EU-Ukraine Association Agreement. And Latvia today, with Lithuania, are the first countries to have ratified the EU-Ukraine Association Agreement. And we thank you for that, and we thank you for your friendship. Georgia, well, Georgia had the world not blinked in 2008, 
Maybe there would not have been the crisis in 2014. And Georgia, I know that when I was looking with my father, my father looks religiously at Schuster Life. And when Mikhailo Saakashvili was speaking, and I was looking at that show with my father, each in our respective homes, we were wondering, was it a Ukrainian minister speaking or from another country, I guess from another country. Georgia has been on our side. Georgia understands our pain because Georgia went through the same thing in 2008. And we thank you for your friendship and we thank you for your support. At the end, I want to tell you that and Minister Kenny, you will recognize that style, right? That after all of this comes the, the ask, right? I want to say that although I, I thank all of the people and all of the nations that have, thanked, that have stood by us, that you had the courage to do that, but you also and your country leaders understood that they were also doing that for their own good. Because President Putin has announced very clearly that he has a duty and a right to defend Russian minorities and Russian speakers wherever they may live. And there are Russians in Ukraine and Georgia and we know what happened there. But there are substantial there's a substantial number of Russians in Moldova, in Kazakhstan, in Kyrgyzstan, in Latvia, in Estonia, in Lithuania, in Poland, in Bulgaria, in Uzbekistan, and in Tajikistan. And all of them. Less in Canada. <laughs> Minister Kenny, you're doing this one, your spirit. You're doing this out of your heart. But nevertheless, there are, that policy is threatening all of our neighbors. And although we have been responsive, and although we've had sanctions, and we've done a lot of things, the brutal truth remains that it has not yet stopped Vladimir Putin. And the only thing, Minister Kenny, that will be a game changer is if Canada shows that leadership that it has shown in the past and gives lethal, lethal weapons to Ukraine in order to enable Ukraine to defend its territory. And Minister, I know that the opponents of such action will tell you that to give lethal weapons will escalate the aggression and the warfare between Russia and Ukraine. And I tell you that Russia is increasing its aggression with every day, including the convoy that went there two days ago, without any lethal weapons going to Ukraine. Two, we have seen that Vladimir Putin has about as much respect for international conventions that he has signed, that the ink has not dried on the document that he has already violated it three times. Three, the Western world is in the indefensible position of having allowed and tolerated France in selling the mistrals to Russia, the aggressor, and wondering whether it should help with true military equipment, the victim of such aggression. But what should be the most convincing argument, Minister, is that we do not want history to repeat itself. And we have seen that the policy of appeasement towards Hitler and Nazi Germany did not stop the Second World War, it actually created the Second World War. And that is why 
I think that all of those opponents should be told the bare truth. Canada should show that leadership that it has always shown in the past in enabling Ukraine to put an end to that aggression, to make the cost of any aggression by Vladimir Putin too costly for him to continue, and then we will have peace, security, and prosperity in Europe and in the world, which is in the best interests of Canada. Thank you very much. Slavo Ukraini. Дякуємо вам за вашу працю на добро українського народу, на добро української держави. І в наших серцях палає гордість, що ви є нашим сином, сином Монтреалю. Дякую.